Joining me now is Google's head counsel, Kent Walker. And, I, and I'm so glad you're here, Kent, because it seems like there's a new patent lawsuit being filed or reported on every day. You think that this is stifling innovation and hurting consumers. How so? Emily, you have it exactly right. This explosion of bad software patent litigation is a real drag on innovation. It's slowing products from coming to market. It's keeping consumers from having the products they want. It's cutting spending on R&D and jobs, so it's hurting the economy and the industry. And it's really a problem for the small guys, the you know, entrepreneurs, the innovators who are building apps in their garage, especially when they're attacked by people who are trying to exploit the system to block products from coming to market. So what is it that you want? Are you expecting the law to change or companies to change their behavior simply out of goodwill? Well, we'd, we'd like both, honestly. We have been advocates of changes to the patent system for years, and we're disappointed that the, the current bill in Congress will make only incremental changes. Getting more funding for the patent office, for example, is a good step, but it doesn't change the fundamental problem that we have a broken system. Now, how, how did it get to this point? I mean, who's to blame? Well, there are a lot of different groups who are involved here. Obviously, when you have a, a complex system, there are a lot of vested interests who have an interest in preserving the status quo. But in the world of software, and software patents in particular, there are two groups who are, who are to blame. One are the software trolls. These are the guys who didn't build the bridge but are standing next to it with a big club trying to take a tax for every time you want to cross it. The others are companies who, rather than competing in the marketplace over who can have the best product, are using legal claims instead of product innovation to try and win success. So are there any companies in particular that you think have been far too aggressive in these lawsuits? Well, unfortunately, a lot of companies get pulled in. You can look at the recent Nortel auction for a sign of companies coming together not to buy new technology, not to buy great engineers or great products, but to buy the legal right to stop other people from innovating. And that's a problem. So talking about Nortel, you guys got outbid by a group of other technology companies. Lots of speculation as to whether you might bid for InterDigital. Can you give us an update on that? Well, the good news is in, in the wake of the Nortel auction, which went for $4.5 billion, more money than has ever been spent for patents in the history of mankind, there are a lot of patent opportunities out there. There are a lot of other interesting things that we're looking at. We want to be disciplined about this, but we also want to make sure that consumers have the right to choose innovative, interesting, dynamic uh, alternatives when it comes to smartphones or tablets or anything else. Now, your competitors are saying Google's only crying wolf about this because Android came to the market late and everybody else has been working on this for a really long time. Google's one of the most innovative companies out there. We've been innovating in Search and in Gmail and in Chrome browsers and, and, and in smartphones and tablets for years. And we've been talking about the need for patent reform for years. We've been making public statements, working for patent reform, going out and, and filing uh, briefs with, with Congress. But, but and I mean, with the you're new to smartphones. I mean, Android came out in 2008. Well, everybody's new to smartphones, right? There, there weren't smartphones in the market until a few years ago. But there was a, clearly a real consumer demand for an innovative new way of exchanging information. Google's all about information and communications. How serious do you think all of this scrutiny from Washington is, the FTC investigation about Google's dominance in the market? How serious do you think that is, and how are you handling it? We've been working with regulators around the world for years. It's a new and evolving industry, and it's only understandable that people have questions about that. But the real issue at the moment right now, the issue that cuts across not just Google, but the whole technology industry, is this plague of patent litigation we're seeing. So that's really what we're focused on. Um, Dana Wagner uh, recently left for Square. Are you going to be shuffling your ranks, bringing in a big antitrust lawyer to uh, combat some of these things you're facing in Washington? We, we continue to have a great antitrust team and have for years and work on a whole variety of, of uh, regulatory issues. So we're feeling pretty good about where we are. Are there any concerns that this growing number of lawsuits is going to be a drain on time and resources among the Google legal team? Well, it's, again, it's not just the Google legal team. It's all the technology industry. There are a lot better things to do with $4 billion than buy patents. We could be investing in the great next generation of creation, either us or the little guys. So it's a drag on everybody's innovation. But don't you think Google's being singled out in particular? No, I, I think it really is a bigger problem. Any company that's innovative and disruptive is going to face some of this, but that goes not only for Google, but again for the little guys in, in, the, uh, in the garage who are just trying to do the startups. All right, Kent Walker, great to hear your thoughts on this and, and some clarification on what's going on with all these patent lawsuits. Thanks for joining us here. It's a pleasure, Emily. On Thanks Bloomberg a lot. West.